Yes, oh. exactly. Well, it's a little bit different. So, yeah, so this is just an example of how you can control, have different experiences for different users of your interview. So here I have my, this should be familiar, the mandatory code block um, that controls the order of the questions. And here are some questions that... What a code block. It's a big interview. It's a huge a interview. <laughs> so what I found is it, it's so much faster, even if you have a lot of questions in your documents, that forces DocAssemble to ask the questions. If you can have them asked in a code block, it speeds up the generation of, the do of that document. Otherwise, it has well, to so there is a, each time. So there's, so there's, an, there's an optimization thing going yes. on there. Okay, hang on. Yeah, also, I found it like it was pretty important to control the order so that it was logical. That's something that people had thoughts about. For sure. Can I, can I, I think this might be a relevant question to ask you here. You know how you've talked about um, tag, were you talking about tagging questions or question IDs? Uh, yeah. Would this be a good time to ask about that in this, in terms of the code block or is this not a good time to ask about that? Um, yeah, we can do that too. So I'll just, let me just lay this out first. So, um, cause the tags are coming a little different way. So okay. the first thing here is uh, this, this uh, variable here, person answering, that's where I'm saying it's the role of the person who's taking the interview. And it can be one of two different things. Um, either tenant or helper or attorney. Okay. And if they answer that, it, that they are a tenant, then right away I show them these two additional screens, how to answer and the overview video. Okay. Attorneys don't see those screens. I also give them like a little pop-up that says, hey, here's what your new case date is, which actually I probably should show to attorneys too, because it's just a useful thing. I've actually, I've been realizing that as I've been using it. <laughs> It's always good when you explain stuff to people, your reasoning, and they think, well, maybe that wasn't, or maybe I should. Yeah. Yeah. Just take out that one line. Just delete 48. You got yep, it. That's all I have to do. You're right. Or, and then I have to indent 49 down as well. Yeah. Well, then you just do prettify or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Though it's, Did you say yeah, pretty I guess it, it thinks it's YAML, so that's not so Yeah, that's true. We need to have a better parser for YAML. And, and we need to make our own code. Um, Dang it. This is VS code, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So that's not going to let you, is it going to let you make your own, like, like, uh, extension, extension for highlighting and, and highlighting, uh, identifying what code is where, like Adam does? Um, it, yes. I don't know if I looked into this a little bit and I think the support might be better in Adam for like nested code because here, this is Python inside YAML. And I think, it's not good, as good at telling you, oh, here's when I switched to Python, here's when I switched to YAML. You might have to write one whole parser that does both, but that, I'll put that aside. Right. Right now. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> keep going, keep going yeah. on the interview. So here's like, there's like, here you can see there's, um, I guess it's only five inflection points because the first time we're just asking for them to say who the person is. Okay. So there are five screens that, are, that differ depending on whether it's a tenant or an attorney who's using the system. Okay. Other explanation that pops up, and then we show the summary of what all their defenses are, and then the last thing that's different is only for attorneys. We ask them for um, custom claims and defenses here. Not check. I'm not sure that's so they, write their own. they wouldn't really be able to write their own claims and defenses. Mm -hmm. Or if they do, they probably shouldn't be shown. We shouldn't show that to every person. So they can edit the file to do that on their own. So that's the basic flow. Um, that's how you do it in a code block. This is just like one slightly different thing here. This was so long, I didn't want it in the main YAML. Code. So this is a trick that you could use too. I set a variable at the end of the code block. And then that variable is is sought in the main YAML file. That makes sense. So this is the mandatory code block is here. Okay. 
And where's the where's that variable? Show me show me where the variable is used. Oh, yeah, answer. The variable is set here. So I just set a dummy variable to true at the end of my code block. And then in my main code block, I look for the definition of that variable. Oh, I see. So as to identify that code block to pull it in. Yep. And that's, I think, the best way. I think there's another way you can do it where you use an event. Instead. I mean, can't you use sets? Yeah, sets or event, right? Uh, the problem with sets is it won't work if the block doesn't actually set anything you want. Okay. It's just giving you, it's giving docassemble a hint, but it will still keep looking until it finds that definition of that variable that you're saying it sets. Quentin, did you say you bring that, you're bringing that variable from interview order into eviction YAML, right? Yeah. yeah Do you bring me... it in with person answering or you bring it in with all answer variables? All answer variables. So it's right. Oh, I see it. Gotcha. I just, it was, I couldn't see it. Okay. Yeah, no, I was, I couldn't see it either until I searched for it. So, so, so how about, how about using event? What are your thoughts on that? I feel like that didn't work as well, and I probably could figure out more about how it works to understand it better. Okay. I, I just tested and I found this was the way that was most reliable for me. Okay. Event seems like a little neater for a lot of reasons, right? Because it's, you know. Because it's, it's easier to identify coding. at the top of the script. Yeah. And, yep. Um, so what, do you remember what was unreliable about it or was that too far back? I don't think it does exactly the same thing. So. Like what does it do? It's just trying to interrupt the flow. It's best just to do some tests and then like once I tested it, I could probably ask Jonathan, hey, why is it doing this? Okay. Explain. And there's a reason, but I found like I expected it to do the same thing as just setting a variable to true at the end. I mm. don't think it worked that way when I was trying it out. Okay. So I don't want to promise that I just didn't make a mistake that one time and it actually does do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Interesting. Very possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you find out, you know, <laughs> share that knowledge. Okay, cool, cool, so that's, cool. How you can, that's how you have two different types of interfaces. So I hope that's yeah. pretty simple, I think. Um, yeah, I wish there were a way, a less complex way to say, to say, to make chunks of questions. So you could say, add this chunk of the question, like that, that you could reuse chunks of questions elsewhere. So it would be some kind of template that you could insert, but I couldn't figure out how to insert parts of questions as opposed to just... I, all I saw was like the if statements about what to display and what not to display. Oh, sure. Variables, but well, I didn't know if there was remember, a way um, to do that. There is a way to do that. And I'm trying to think of the best interview that will exemplify it. So let me change. If you show me a freaking if statement with percent signs around that you're going to be in trouble, mister. <laughs> Why is that? It's not it. Because that's not what I'm looking for. Oh. That's messy. That's just <laughs> messy. Reading that shit is... Sorry, reading that stuff. I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. Gonna... We're on YouTube. Well, that's it, I hope. <laughs> I <think it's> <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, all right. I think this does an example of it. Let's see. Maybe not. Well, this, this would be a quick example, I guess. Um, so here, this is including this financial statement.yaml file. Mm -hmm. It's not really the best test, but. And then it says here which variables it actually needs from that. Um, so that's one thing you could do. So here oh, it's Does the, it only show certain parts of one question? Like it doesn't show like a part of the question that goes, what the heck's your name? Because I already know your name. Say I, say, I, say I have like a bunch of fields like yeah. first name, last name, phone number, blah, blah, blah. But I already know their phone number, so I don't want to show their phone number. So, but without the parentheses, like 
if uh, I have breaking left. up the question. Yeah. Like breaking up the question to like, I can keep this part of the question elsewhere. So this, this interview here has three separate sets of questions that it can ask as a group. So it asks one question. questions, financial statement questions, and then the download screen. As one question? The, the way I'm controlling which set of questions is included is through this. Right, but I'm not talking about sets of questions. She's talking, talking about, about one, one question that has multiple fields. Like one page, right? So like this one page screen. has various things on it depending on what templates I decide to include. I don't have to write it all inside the question. I can pull it in from somewhere else. Okay. I don't know if that's possible. That sounds like a lot to ask, but. No, it is possible. And I think that. And Michelle, you're saying you want the code in the code block, not the code in the question. I, yeah. I want, yeah, I want, I want the, it can be in the question, but I want it to be abstracted. Like, I don't want to say, you know, percent sign, this right. is my question, and this is the sub question, and this is this other part of the question. Mm -hmm. I want to say, access this question in another file that I don't even have to think about. So, like, myquestion.yaml. You know, and it'll add that to the question to the same page as the rest of the stuff. So there can so, be the percent. So in a way, you have you have elements store like you have not sub questions like they're called sub questions in YAML, but basically you have a question that's say, let's like say name first first yeah. name last name middle name phone number right. So you've add got that, a question with right? that. So you've got so in a, almost in a way you've got fields listed somewhere. And right. then you can build the question. We can build whatever question you want out of the fields. Is that yep. I, kind I of what you're talking about, right? I prefer to say page because question okay. is yeah. very confusing. Is okay, page. page is fine. I call it yeah. screen, but you're right. That's a screen. that's a okay. good term too. Screen. Screen. Yeah, so, either one. Yeah, either one. Okay, so basically, page or screen, any page or screen has a few fields. And what right. you want to do is list all the fields somewhere and then build the page slash screen from those fields. Exactly. Oh, you want to build the fields dynamically. Exactly. Oh. Caroline, oh. that was a beautiful rearticulation. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, well, so I don't find that most automatically designed things that need to be interacted with are very good. Okay. Yeah. It's a natural first step to say like, hey, the computer already knows the questions. Why don't we just have it figure out what things I need? And the that's why that's why I control the order of the questions. And I think the same is true for designing each screen that the user see or page. So but there isn't a way to like abstract the, the fields into separate files. Yeah, there definitely is a way to do it. Um, so here's okay. like here's Here's what I thought you were asking, which is how do I show two different versions of a question without having it be... That is, that was also the question. Okay. I made another question. Um, I snuck one in there. Okay. Sorry. So here's the first part. Like, so you can just use the if statement, which you might not have seen. It's a little... I didn't find it for a while, but... Okay. Um, so this is the, a version of this question that only shows... And here I've written it out in the comment only if the user has pre-checked their income type. So I, I want to ask them questions about what kind of income they have and details like the amount of their income. So I have one version of this dialogue which shows if they have already told me what type of income it is and another one that shows if they haven't told me the income up front. So where, where's the else? If there's no else, there's just an if. So this only will be asked if, it only shows the screen. You're talking yep. about a screen. Yep. So it only shows the screen if that evaluates the truth. Okay. Yeah. It's a way to help DocAssemble sort through which version of the question you need when there's more than one question in your file that does so the screen. So screen, which version of the screen you need? Because you've got a right, screen yeah. somewhere. Which version so of the screen, right. His an right. So basically his answer to your question about the fields is you don't, you don't build a question from fields. You have screen. one question or another question, and then you decide which question you want to 
bring in. But Screen, the other thing yes. that I I may have missed this, but between your conversations, Quentin said you want to build the fields dynamically. Did you want to build the fields dynamically or the screens dynamically? Did you say you wanted to build fields dynamically? I no, guess I, 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 what the, I meant to summarize it's choosing it was as fields on a screen. using the fields dynamically, right? Yeah, I mean, building yeah. the no, fields dynamically uh, is its own thing. And I would love to be able to abstract that as well. But that's just the way I like to code. So, yeah, it's okay. yeah, a style thing. I mean, but, you can give um, a good first draft. It's not like it's there's no yeah. value to it, especially yeah. if it could actually generate YAML for you. Yeah, if 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 there would if there was a way to abstract fields that you can combine onto one screen, that would be I I would find that very useful. But so that's... you want to kind of have like a library of fields, like with the right phrasing for the question. Maybe it's translated already, and then you just so, drop it in place. Yeah. So for example, the name, number, and address field. I already know their address, right? Like. Like I have all those fields, I want them to be on one screen. But if they don't, but I can uninclude the address field. But I don't want to have all the code for the address field right there because I already made a field somewhere else that's mm. an address field, right? Mm. But I don't need it here. So, but then I could just say if address field needed, show address field, right? Because right. address field is somewhere else where we figured out what it's what's good for an address field, and we can edit that all in one place. But you know, well, you could use the show if um, I my own compiler. What? You could use show if for that. Right, but then, but really then you have to, you. but then you have to write the whole address field in there. No, like you, you have to. Do oh, that. you mean all the you have, you have to write all the field yeah, the, items, yeah. right? right? I can't have a file somewhere else that's like this is the the address questions and have everything there so that I can reuse it in multiple forms. Mm -hmm. I would have to have a, 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 a screen for that. What I want is to be able to include that question, that individual, the, not the question, the individual fields, set of fields, that, set of fields that set, we might call it. I, yeah. don't know. Um, I think, I think what I would do is, along with other. Yeah. Fields. I think I would use this if statement here, like this style. Let me just open a new file so I don't mess so up. That would be a different screen. Whole different Again, screen. that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't, that's fine as a like alternative, like that's what is available, but it's not what I'm asking for, which is fine. No, no, you know, I, Sometimes I, you don't always get what you want. Which is, I think that's true. So yeah, so I do something like this, like if not defined address, well, or client.address. Right, but that's a screen, right? Yeah. Wait, You're going to do this right, once. You're going to build your library of questions that look like this, where you have two versions. I don't think these cases are going to come up that often. So you've done it mm -hmm. once, you have this library of questions that are good, they've been tested and validated, they've been translated into six different languages that you can pull from anytime you wanna have the address question. And this handles the one time that you've done it, it handles the version of your interview where you ask for the address on the same screen and the one where you ha ask for the address on a different screen. So I, I, I think that's the way to do it, build your library of designed screens. Okay, so, uh, yeah. so basically, yeah, so you so have to figure out what all your of screens, but right. it's, that's what's in the separate file. Okay. Yeah. And this, this, this is basically a library of questions that I'm working on here. And it's not that big, it's just the ones that I found I needed. Yeah, so yeah. This is a list that's, of that's generic questions was... that cover things like address, asking for someone's name, Yep. It's not, they're not the best, it's not that long a list actually. It's only have five or so screens in it, but that they cover all different oh. variable types. I see address.state, states list, is that a database you've made or is that something you're pulling from elsewhere? It's built into DocAssemble. Okay, cool. Yeah. But it'd be, are we, can we import packages like with NPM? js.org yes. uh well they're from pypy for, for this okay. but they're Python's. online yeah they're online and other people can write them yep that's a package manager that's awesome yep yeah so like i've done that with oh, county information and stuff some ways to do that 
<laughs> that wasn't built in. So that's, I think, my approach. I would say, like, you should design your screens. Don't don't try to auto-generate them. Yeah, I like that approach. Um, and you don't have to do that many of them, really, to have a really useful library. Because each interview is going to have mostly new questions, except for things like you said, name, address, contact information. Probably only need two versions of all of those screens. Yeah. Then you can translate yeah. them. No, I like this approach. Okay. I like this approach. That's interesting. If you want cool. to do auto generation, let's see if I can find that. The quickest name might be on the documentation. Well, um, auto generation meaning filling in the like Mad Libs. I I know how to. Do, I can figure that part out. No, I mean, you can you can also demo it if you want. But okay, well I'll just show you what I was thinking that you meant, and it might not even okay. be what you meant. But okay. It's just called here generating fields with code. Oh, yeah. So you make a variable that looks like this, which can be done by literally typing out a dictionary. This is options in a selection, yeah. Nope, these are fields. So this is... That, that's, that's what I mean, but it's, but it's, it's like uh, when you populate... Oh, never mind, that's React. You don't know React. That's fine. I've, I've worked with this kind of data before, but that's okay, yeah. Okay. So in this yeah, example, like instead of having this question here, we asked her about apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. We have a data structure re which represents the list of fields. And yep. you could have it be literally typed out, or it could be for some dynamic way of generating it. And like I can't think of a good example right now, um, except I do do that with discovery questions because those come from a file. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of hard to read, though. Okay. So our list of discovery questions comes from a CSV file, which is essentially like an Excel spreadsheet. So this list of this spreadsheet here gets turned into, here's the variable name, and here's the text that's shown to the in the question. Yeah, there is, yeah. Yeah, Got so it. it's like dynamically generating a list of fields. Yeah. And let me see if I can find a finished interview that maybe can show you what that is. I don't know if any of these are going to be finished interviews. Probably not. Maybe this one. Yeah, no, I didn't get to as far as discovery on this example. But I was going to show you, yeah, that's going to be too many questions to get through to show you that. But basically, it shows you a list of the discovery options that you can check off which ones you want. The reason why I'm doing it dynamically is because I wanted to have some of them be pre-checked in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. And that's dependent on the actual claims that the person made in the interview. So that's like a way to do dynamic fields. I think you should use it sparingly. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you really have like a whole list of really dynamic options that you need in the interview, design your screens so that they're logical and that they're clean and they're user tested and validated for what your purpose is for that interview. Yeah. Cool. Um, I already explained I this. Think, I think we've covered that one, that yeah. question from okay. me. Did anybody else have questions about that particular technical avenue? All right. Um, does anyone have other questions? I know I have two more topics, but I guess it's almost been an hour and I don't, if other people have questions, I don't want to monopolize whatever time everyone has. I'm good. How about you, Natanya? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. All right. Just observe my, my, uh, thrashing. Great. <laughs> Actually, I have to go, uh, have another meeting, but All right. I've learned a lot. Um, and I don't know, Quentin, if you're gonna if you're gonna do this next week, but if you are, I'll be here. Okay. Yeah. I was saying earlier I can't do next week because of child care needs, but yeah. I could do the week after. So Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice to meet you, Natanya. Good to meet you too. Bye. 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 Have we completed the assigned time for this? The like Delegated. One minute left. Designated. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, other questions. Over a little bit, if you if like ten or fifteen minutes would be fine.
today. Okay. Yay, Quentin. <laughs> you're, you're amazing, Quentin. But do you remember what my third question was? Because I can only remember the first two. The, did you email it to everybody or did you just ask him? I just asked him. Oh. So the second one was how to access another API or database. And then the third one was... Oh, sure. Something. Let's if only see. we'd been... Hang on. Do you remember what the third one was? Because if we don't remember it now, I'm not going to remember it later. If only we'd been recording. Yeah, um, that's true. Well, I'm sure it'll come up. When you'd go back to work on stuff on your own, that's when it'll come up. <laughs> right. That's right. Well, then there'll be another Wednesday coming up, I hope. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll actually write it down that time. Mm -hmm. Oh, Quentin, this, this question is also involves, do we need to save stuff on that database later, right? Um, and that also involves, you know, user privacy. But. Um, hmm, interesting. Okay. Well, yeah, so here's an example, which you can find on the GitHub. Um, okay, what, what is, what, can you paste the address somewhere of that yeah. particular file? Sure. Okay. Uh, I might, let me see if it's pinned. I don't know that it is, but let's see. How do I see the pinned items? The pinned items is on the top left. Oh, there it is. There you go. Yeah. Oh, now it's over it's here. It's on the right now, yeah. <laughs> might not be on there. I should put it on there. Just now I'll add it. Okay. So um, we have this GitHub repository. It's under GDLS. And then working group. You did a recording of this, didn't you, as well? I think there is a recording of it. I know I did a presentation, but I can't remember for sure if there was. So here's the presentation. Oh, yeah. It doesn't look like I linked the video recording. I think I didn't start recording until after that. Oh, I see. Yeah. But I'll, I'll put on the Slack data? right now. Okay. So github.com slash gbls stock assemble dash working group. Oh, I'm going to add that in after you've provided it for us on Slack. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to copy and paste. Otherwise, mm -hmm. too much work. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, cool. Now. very cool. Very cool. Okay, so the basic of it is, um, you, I don't know if you've tried this in Python before, but the main library that I like to use is the requests library. Mm -hmm. Really nice. It's an abstraction over working with REST APIs, but mm -hmm. it's low enough level that you don't have to like learn the library that much. It's just okay. a pretty simple one library you can use for almost every API that you want to deal with. That's cool. This actually does not use requests now that I look, I'm looking at it. <laughs> oh. It Let me see. Maybe it does. Oh, here we go. There we go. Oh, yeah, this is basically all you do. You just do request. Dot get. Get. You have your URL, which has all of your get parameters, assuming that that's what you're trying to do is get. And that's it. And then you get your JSON result that you can work with. Yeah. So it's really powerful. It lets you work with almost every API that is, um, yeah, you can, you can use it for almost every API. And okay. even if there's like something specific, like I tried working a bunch with the Microsoft Graph API, and first I tried using some abstraction someone had already built, but it was just easier to go to requests because then I could actually okay. understand what I was doing. And is that, is that imported with PyPy or something like that? or? Like, um, so the request library is already installed on, on your docassemble instance. So you just have to mention it here as an import. Right. As an import, got it. Yeah, I mean, really, you should modularize this. This is just as a demo. Yeah. Modularize. And so um, that's getting, and you would give us permissions and stuff, which is good. Um, and then the question is, are we saving stuff on your database? But if it's a pro se user, then I imagine we're not saving stuff. The question is, if you're using it in a clinic, 
mm-hmm. then would we want to save the stuff that the legal aid or volunteer is doing on your database, right? Would they be your clients, as it were? I suspect that um, that's going to be probably fine either way you want to do it with the people that you're going to be working with. So whether you want them to save it or not, but one model I mean, might be to at have your clinics, but at GBLS clinics, yeah. Would I think that be model would be to have people log in. Like I, I, you got to see what my list of saved interviews was. Mm-hmm. Have have the advocates log in and get this list that's relevant to them. By default, encryption is turned on. So if you want to keep that turned on. You should. The one thing encryption limits you from doing is sending like automated reminders. You have to turn those off if you want reminders to go out automatically. You can't run any background code if the interview is encrypted. But um, as long as you don't need that feature, your interview is encrypted with whoever's logged in. So if the advocate who's working with that client is logged in, they can see all of their own individual cases. And they can refer to it, print out a copy of it if the client loses track of it. For people who are pro se, um, if they don't log in, the interview is still encrypted with a random password that's tied to that computer and that browser. So someone else at that browser and that computer, if they weren't using incognito mode, could access it, but nobody else in the world could read it. If they're logged in, it's limited to their logged in account. It's encrypted with the password. Yeah, that that I and I wanted to confirm, and that's good to confirm. But does it? But if they can use a password and username or whatever to log in from other computers, other devices. Correct. Okay. Yeah, um, it's only the unlogged in users that are limited to that one computer. If they're logged in, it's from anywhere in, in the world with the login and password. Quentin, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. sorry. Well, one more thing I was going to just say is. The login can be a, um, a phone number, and then they get an SMS code every time they want to log in. So they don't actually have to create accounts that are very burdensome. Okay. That can be their username or their password? Or... The username is their phone number. I don't know how the password is generated in that situation, but um, you have to, to prove them that you're SMS you code. by answering, putting in the code that you get sent to you. Okay. Um, can I ask you, so the, say um, you were, an advocate was doing a clinic, um, and your users, you, you know, had seven people, you know, doing sealing their quarries or something. How does the, how, how do you make a distinction here? Is there a field in the, in, in the YAML file that, so I see you have this, you know, I get a little, little V Quinton. Mm-hmm. Where, so basically for the advocate, how are they going to know which of these interviews belongs to which um, client? That question was just asked in the questions yes. channel, actually. <laughs> right. Susan was just asking that exact question. So the answer there, I think, is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so um, if we the can set just parts read. function. Uh-huh. And that's what I do in the eviction interview, too. It's right here. Can't send reminders if it's encrypted. Yeah. Why is that? Oh, probably it's in the code file. Um, Because it runs as the cron user, and literally it's restricted to the person who... um, is logged in, they provide their password, that's what decrypts the session. It's never saved anywhere. Your, um, mm. your decryption key is never saved anywhere. Yeah, which I love, by the way. Yeah. I absolutely love that. You might be able to set up some way to, like, have it create a limited entry in a database that only sends out reminders, where it's not saving anything about the user other than the date that they need to be reminded and the reminder text. Yeah. And their phone right. number. You have to make a separate interview and their phone number, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think 
you know, I use it somewhere. <laughs> well, I've got a new question for you at some point that doesn't have okay. to happen now. We have five more minutes. I will minutes. ask okay. while we're you looking for set ask. parts. I'll go check that. I'll check the answer okay. out. So go ahead and ask your question, okay. Michelle. Well, actually, I never finished getting an answer of at your GBLS Corey clinics. Would you, if people were using this, you know, app, would you want them to be to get like an account with GBLS and have their data go into the GBLS database? I think we would need to have intake information for people that we help in the clinic because we have to track it. Does not have to be tied to what they do in the interview. Probably they would want to save the final output, but I mean I don't I don't know. But but you'd you're, want you're to asking get like if they'd name. want it for analytics. You'd want to get their name and stuff into your database. Probably for most of clinic participants, we'd want to know who we're helping uh, because it's something that like if there's a grant that's funding it. We have to track certain information about people, but I can't say that's true for every clinic that would happen. And maybe they yeah, make exceptions right. for people. We'd probably ask for it, but it could be a separate intake form. It doesn't have to be through this system. Okay. Well, I mean, because they're filling out the information for the petition form anyway, mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of extra work to make them fill it out twice is the thing. Yep. So. If if we could coordinate on like this is a way that we can make a hook for you guys to you know hook it into your database, then that would be useful to okay. know ahead of time, just in the way we prepare, right? Yeah. In the way we write the code. All right, so on to the new question, and I mean we'll we'll work that out later because it'll take credentials and stuff like that. But um, the other question, new question. Uh, really, I think it should be really simple. Opening a new interview from the current interview. Yep. Um, so I think that's where you would use the action URL or action interview or something like that. Let me see if I can find the function. There's, it's in that, it's in that um, answer, I think. In my answer? In the VS Code, he's got showing up. About there, or it's in... Uh, uh, no, maybe it was in the structuring code because I oh. just saw it. I think all you have action to do button. is your URL. Oh, that's not action button. Uh, let me see. Action something. Here you go. So you interview URL button, button, button. or something. So Michelle, this is what you do: oh. you interview oh. URL, and oh, then you okay. set the keyword of I that's equal to the name of the interview that you want it to generate a link to interview URL as long as I know the name I can look it up again URL. and I can look up the details the documentation is generally pretty good though yeah I wish there was there is a slightly different format that I would love to have hang around somewhere but it doesn't that's not where it's at right now which is it's the the documentation is like really very extensive though sometimes it gets a bit technical in its language mm -hmm. and sometimes well, it skips comes depth sometimes too it's not quite as um you know dumbified as some of us could you it's like well yeah. now that you understand this let's do this but we skip skips two through seven <laughs> well well right. see so the, so in my documentation generally what i like to do is modularize it like a modularize, modularize mod, whatever, code, abstract code, so that I go, so this is the next step, and if you want to hear more about that step, go here, so that, mm -hmm. you know, so that it doesn't all have to be explained in every in one place. place. Yeah, There's a yeah. lot of re-explaining of stuff, which kind of, I get lost because yeah. I skim over and then I miss something else. Mm -hmm. So, like, if there is a, and this is explained in this other place, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Michelle, what we're doing, I mean, it's all, you're talking about explanation. I mean, that's what documentation is, it's yeah. explanation, right? So that's what we're, we're realizing and after we did this usability study in Baltimore, because we're writing legal information, we used to, every time we used a word that was unfamiliar, we talked about a form, we linked it, and we found that 
by that that was distracting for people. So we would write whatever it was, use the words that might be unfamiliar. And then at the bottom, we say, for more on this, see that. So basically, we still link it like what you're talking about, but put all the, you know, for more on this, go here, for more on that. But all of that goes at the bottom. And that's sort of my new um, way of yeah. writing and talking and when we talk to editors because you know, I mean, if it's more readable for somebody who reads at a fourth grade level, it's still more readable for somebody who reads at a graduate school yeah. level. Yep. So, yep. yep. So abstracting documentation, I think is this, it's all about communication, really. It's all about communication and it's about teaching and just in time learning. Yeah. Well, I, just in time learning. that's where I've done my <laughs> requests are on the documentation. So I, I know Jonathan takes them. So sometimes he'll rewrite it. Yeah, well, well, that's read. the thing I, I was about to say before. Like, you know, obviously, if I want ways to tighten up the documentation, I can make a pull request. So, yeah. like, I like it's not on him. It's on, you know, me needing to take action about it. So if that doesn't get changed, then that's on, on me or whoever it is that, you know, is, is having that challenge. And sometimes we don't have bandwidth for it. And that's just yeah. how it is. And people learn differently too. That's the, uh, that's the other part. You know, I mean, you can write something that is clear as day yeah. and somebody's going to read it differently. You know, yeah. <laughs> somebody's going to read it or in a way gonna read it. Like, I have written that's out the, the biggest thing I find. People don't read stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. People don't read stuff. And you know what? That's not true some people do read stuff and that's who I write this stuff for, right? Yeah. Some people yeah. do actually read it, but there are so many people who say, well, I did it and it didn't work. And then we go through the steps and they're like, Oh, I didn't do that step or that step or that step. And I'm like, well, then you didn't do the steps. Did you? <laughs> it's you not know, the same it's, thing. That's for also people, they think they read, you know, I mean, yeah. like I was 15 I've minutes myself. for a meeting today because I was on this hangout and I saw the picture and everything, but what I didn't see right in front of me, a big green button is join the hangout. And I was sitting here waiting for it to start. <laughs> yeah. That seems like I've a good done, I've done it myself, you know? Yeah. You just don't see yourself. things sometimes. And yeah. then of course, when you're got too much going on, you don't see anything, you know, or you think, Think you've said something or you think you've read something it's just you know, yeah you can only you can you design as well as you can for the broadest audience you can yeah. but you know I mean at some point there's a trade-off and at some point there's you know there's no point in going further you've gone as far as right. you can take yeah you know, I mean they're basic as far as you can take them. We're, not, we're not all exactly the same so we don't all learn the same way yeah yeah anyway all right I should probably awesome. sign off but thank you, thank you a million discussion. times, Quentin. Oh, yeah. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you all. Michelle, for... send me an email so we can talk about your stuff. Yes. And okay. Quentin, you and I should like brainstorm about this uh, panel in uh, January. I know it's not till yeah. January, but I don't like waiting. I like doing it on my here mind. You know it. That's Get true. Although we have to see if ITC approves a session. That's part of what people do is like they wait. Oh, they haven't done that yet. Okay. Yeah. We don't know if it will happen yet. Okay. All right. That's fair. Okay. Um, cool. Nice to see you all. Right. all. Good to see everybody. Talk later.